You ready, girl? Yeah! Let's do this. I'm excited. Oh. Don't be nervous. Okay. I'm probably going to use it in the beginning right now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bridge Effect. Today I have a wonderful guest with me. Brandy is Liberian. And so that, that's my main thing here is for us to connect the diaspora displays to the born in state. And so um, I like to highlight different Liberian, um, young Liberians within that, the diaspora and back home. And so I'm grateful that you have agreed to come and talk with me today. <laughs> Y'all, I've been trying to tell her, do not be nervous. We're just gonna have a, a good old time okay. and like chop it up. Okay. All right. Um, so. I was scrolling on my Instagram stories and she had a like perfect, perfect, perfect topic for us to discuss today. Uh, I know 2020 has been like super rough, but if you have started a business or anything like that, I'm bringing her on to give us some tips and tricks for the taxi. Would you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Hi everyone, my name is Brandy Samuel. I am a CPA, that just means Certified Public Accountant. If you are following us, watching us in Liberia, that's equivalent to a Chartered Accountant. I am uh, currently Director of International Tax at my firm, where I handle inbound, outbound transactions, but I also am uh, here for my people. So the tax tips that I, would provide, I was providing that day was, I was, doing a lot of uh, year-end planning for my own clients. Right. And I said, my people need to hear this stuff too. Exactly. And so I posted it on some of the things that we were talking about that I felt could be very relevant to my followers on Instagram. A lot of people started small businesses this year. Yeah. Like a lot of people started small businesses. Right. And one of uh, my friends who started a small business, she came to me and um, she was telling me about how she started she was making a lot of money. She was like, man, I think I made like 20 grand. And I was like, after taxes, how much did you make? Yeah. And she was like, what do you mean? Mm. And so that's kind of how. So that's what like prompted you to even say, let me start posting something in my story. Yes. To help, to help my people out. Yeah, because it's not just for, you know, the rich and wealthy. Our people need to be engaged. You know, a lot of times if you hear Small Business Saturdays, you want to like, you know, flood people's businesses with funds. And income mm -hmm. but one of the number one things that small businesses fail is because they don't take care of their taxes mm -hmm. and so that's kind of where I was from speaking to a CPA that's probably <laughs> well, <laughs> there's nothing simple about what you do but in layman's terms um, what, what what could help out a small business owner so it's, 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 it's kind of difficult right because okay. the US tax law is one of the most complicated tax structures in the world it's so many different nuances you can set up an LLC, but what else does that mean? Just setting it up, one that one simple thing can, create, can mean so many different things. Mm -hmm. Because an LLC can then make an election to be so many different other types of businesses. Depending on how many owners you have, it means you can file on several different types of forms. Okay. If it has the LLC owns entities in other jurisdictions, like meaning other foreign jurisdictions. It, it just, it's, it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So... Get into small businesses. If you now own a business, even if you never have set up an LLC, you are operating as a sole proprietor, which means that you're you're the owner. It's not in any formal structure. Okay. You you are just operating. You're running a business. You okay. probably but would you you probably haven't registered in any state. <laughs> mm, have you registered? You probably are paying sales taxes like you should be paying sales taxes. Yeah, depending on what state you operate in, that's a whole nother area of tax law. I can Okay, so we're gonna use Brandy as an example because Brandy did start a business with her husband. Yes. And so matter of fact, go ahead and plug that yes. in. We're gonna do a little commercial break. <laughs> yes, my husband who is also a Liberian, he's picked up woodworking, posting things that he was making around the house. People asked him, oh, can you make me one? The business person that I am, I said, hold up. We can monetize yes. this. Yes. Your so I immediately set up an LLC for him so that he could be structured properly and register him with the state of Georgia mm -hmm. so that we could begin to operate properly as a business. So if you start a business, you're doing well. Um, I would Im immediately um, suggest that you set up in some sort of structure. The simplest thing is usually uh, a sole proprietor, meaning you are actually operating as a business yourself. Okay. 
or you could set up an LLC. So for tax purposes, the LLC that he owns, so I'm not an owner on that, I'm an officer, but not an owner. Okay. He, because it's, he's the only owner, mm -hmm. it's considered disregarded for tax purposes. Okay. Meaning it's treated as tax as if it's a sole proprietor. Okay. Start the LLC, mm -hmm. we start receiving income. Okay. We, we have assets that we have accumulated, meaning He's purchased several different types of equipment. Okay. He's purchased wood. He's now using the house as his, you know, office. as his office. Okay. Yes, exactly. His workspace. The sales that we're making is taxable in the state of Georgia. Okay. So we have to pay a sales tax every time we make a sale. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, we, we collect the sales tax. We collect it from the customer and then we remit it over to or pay it over to the state the of Georgia. State, right. Okay. okay. So now we checked off sales tax and okay. that happens literally on a monthly basis. Okay. A lot of people don't realize that. Right. Cause if I, I, my cousin called me, she's another librarian. She started this and I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> she was like, Brandy, help me. The state of Georgia say I owe all these taxes. And a lot of times people don't realize that. And now she would have to like stop her business mm. to maybe, maybe she was banking on this business of, you know, doing this full time. And if it got if it got too out of hand, she yeah. would have had to like maybe stop her business, go back to doing a full time job, so large, she can pay a tax. A larger lump sum in your taxes. Exactly. So you don't want to have to pay a larger lump sum in your taxes. This is something you do monthly, or if it's sales tax, or if they are like an online business, that it would the tax should come out per. Yes, purchase. depending on where each state has it has its own different laws, but right. you want to make sure if you have a business, is it subject to sales tax? Mm -hmm in which jur jurisdiction is a subject to sales tax and how often you want to pay it. Okay. A lot of states allow you to pay that online. So that's the first thing, sales tax. Right. Okay, now let's fast forward to tax time because it's a single member LLC, meaning he's the only owner. Mm -hmm. He files this on his 1040. A lot of people are very familiar with the 1040. Right. The business will be reported on Schedule C. Okay. Now, what people are most um, I always hear people talk about this write-offs. Oh, can I write this off? Can I write this off? Can I write that off? <laughs> you have to be very careful about what you're considering write-offs because at the end of the day, you want to show that you're a healthy company. Mm -hmm. If you actually spent that money, yes, by all means, write, write it off. off. But you don't want to get stuck in a situation, which I, I also see this, get stuck in a situation where you've been claiming losses all this time and now you want to buy a house or now you maybe want to get loan to expand your business. And people are like, I don't, I'm not gonna give you money if you're losing. Mm. So you have to be very cautious about trying to write off everything. If you actually spent it, yeah, that's a very different thing. Right. But if you're just looking for random expenses just because, mm -hmm. no. Mm. I just, I just, I've seen it happen a lot of times. People okay. have been claiming losses all this time, and they actually want to now get into a situation where they want to purchase something, and they need funding to do it. So they, they go to a bank to ask for a loan. Bank says, let me see your tax returns. Mm. And they're like, you're not making any money off of this. Like, why, why should we give you money if you can't even, you're not even staying you know, above. Right. And so if you are starting a small business, set up an LLC and actually operate properly because you can now take expenses like your, 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 your house. Mm -hmm. You can take a percentage of the square footage that he's using. So oh. he's using the entire biz, the basement as, um, as his office space. The house can be used as an, an expense. So now all the utilities that you normally would not have taken right. can be deducted. Okay. Because he's using the light, well, he's the using the power, exactly yeah. electricity. electricity. Okay. Current. It, it, yeah, <laughs> your, your current. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> so your house expenses, um, any equipment okay. that he's using, could, um, if it's depreciable, okay. they're basically saying it's losing value, losing value. each year. All right. So the whole goal is to be tax efficient, not tax avoidance. Ooh. Okay, tax avoidance will put you okay. in jail. Don't look, don't look at me. Look <laughs> at tax them. avoidance. <laughs> now one one thing, all that stuff y'all doing will put you in jail. No. Okay. How much am I actually making, and will this expense that I'm spending money on actually yield dividends quickly? Mm. Dividends meaning like a return on your return on your investment. Right. Will it will it yield a return on your investment as quickly as you're spending the money? I guess within the process of creating that LLC and now you come to the end of the year, you've done all your business, you have been following along, paying your monthly taxes or quarterly 
Sales quarterly? tax. You can do you can do quarterly. Okay, so you you've done your monthly or quarterly taxes and you're getting to the end of the year. What does that look like for the business? So the end of the year, it you determine if you have a profit or a loss, but your the tax return is not due until April 15th. Okay. You have the ability to extend your filing of your tax return for six months. Very normal. Post the April 15th. April 15th. Okay. So you have until October 15th of the following year of your business to actually file your tax return. Okay. To file. But you must pay your best guess of your, S, your like how much you think you owe right. by April 15th. Okay. The extension is a time to file, not extension to pay. Mm. And a lot of people may not realize that. Okay, say, do I, say that again. The <laughs> extension on your tax return, on your 1040 or your partnership return, whatever, your extension is a time to file, not an extension of time to pay. So you pay your, your best guess mm -hmm. as much as you can. And then when you file after that deadline, mm -hmm. if you have a little bit more or less, you you, you can catch up. But okay. the goal is to pay as much as possible to avoid penalties and interest. Because if you don't, if you don't pay on time, you have penalties and interest. One more other thing I want to make sure I um, state, self-employed people, meaning you're a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, mm -hmm. you're the only owner of your LLC, you must pay taxes on a quarterly basis. It's another reason why it's good to say, well, how much am I actually making as a business? Right. Because if you are making a profit on that business, uh -huh. you are required to pay quarterly estimated taxes. Mm. You're the owner of the LLC. You right. actually own the company. Mm -hmm. The month, the profit that you're making, mm -hmm. if you are making a profit, you are required to pay self-employment tax. So think oh, about what's the importance of having an accountant and a CPA because a lot of people don't have that on their, I guess, team of five. Where you, you have so the importance of having a CPA, you know, I always tell my clients, especially if they're new, they're new business owners. I say, you know how to do what you do, mm -hmm. right? So say this is like. Say if, if I, I mean, he happens to have married a CPA, right? right? And say he came to me looking for help. Like, I don't know how to woodwork. I don't know how to chop wood. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to, I mean, I'm learning the term. <laughs> yeah, say I'm learning that. the terminology because, I mean, he's here. Yeah. But I don't know how to do that. Yeah. I know how to do what I know how to do. Crunch the numbers. Exactly. And so in order. I know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, so you hire somebody, like you need to get in the mindset of hiring people that knows that knows what they're doing. The people that went to to school. Did they get she she know book for uh -huh. a reason. They didn't sit in school for nothing. <laughs> yeah, she didn't get a school fee. They didn't get a school fee. <laughs> she didn't get a school fee. She school went fee. to class every day, passed all of her tests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to get in the mindset of having a team of people. Mm -hmm. Get a financial advisor, mm -hmm. get a CPA, get an accountant. And I stole this gem from uh, one of my attorney friends. He says you gotta have ABCs your attorney, your banker, and your CPA. Mm. Get you an attorney, a banker, and a CPA, I your like ABC. That. I like that. It's, they cost money, right? right? But you rather pay them a smaller fee than having to, you know. You pay whatever penalized exactly. costs that you might incur. Exactly. For not having them. Exactly. Or, you know, no, but um, I wanted to talk, you know, since we're talking, this is about the diaspora, you know, we're talking to a lot of our brothers and sisters who may not have, you know, they may, be U.S. citizens now and living abroad. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, there is an. Imp you are required to still file a U.S. tax return. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. You are still, if you are a U.S. citizen, you are required to file a U.S. tax return. If you are a green card holder, regardless of where, where you, you live, yeah. The the good thing about it is there's relief, right? You know, like my cousin left and went to Liberia and lived there for many years before he returned back. But while he was there. There is an exclusion called the foreign earned income exclusion. There's two different tests to meet, to meet it. One is bona fide resident, meaning I left America. I, I'm on like a long term assignment. Like I, I relinquished a lot everything. of everything. This is my new home, my new tax home. Mm -hmm. Or this called uh, the physical presence test, meaning you are physically present in another country for a period of days. I can't remember off the top of my head what those days are. But okay. you are physically present for at least a 12 month period in a different jurisdiction. And so if you beat either of those tests, bona fide residence or the physical presence test, you are able to exclude up to, I know the number was upwards of 110 or so thousand dollars a year. So okay. so for example, if you were in the United States filing those, you know, filing a tax return, 
you had to pay taxes on that. Right. But if you are living abroad, the idea is that you're probably paying taxes where you are. Mm -hmm. So you are you are allowed an exclusion mm. of the income that you're that you're making while you're living abroad. Okay. And you can take housing as well. Um, but that a lot of, and foreign tax credit. So okay. if any portion of your your income, say you make over that amount, and you're taxed in the U.S. on that amount, mm -hmm. but you also pay taxes in the jurisdiction where you live, you are able to claim what's called a foreign tax credit. Okay. Against the income that's taxed in both places. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. So a lot of we call them expats. Yes. If you are a U.S. citizen, a green card holder, and you're no longer living in the United States and you're working abroad, you are still required to file a tax return, but there's relief. And it's called the foreign or income exclusion. Okay. The reason why it's beneficial to do that, again, you are living abroad, working abroad, you decide, you decide to come back one day, you want to build a house, you want to start a business, mm. and, you want to, and you go to the bank and say, hey, I need to, you know, like, let me see a tax return. And you don't have anything to show. Hmm. And now they don't want to loan you money. So, so would this be necessary if, um, if they're not working for a U.S. based company doesn't matter. or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Ooh. Does not matter if you're working for a U.S. based company or not. If you are a U.S. citizen or green card holder, you are required to file. It doesn't matter until it matters. That's, ooh, that's true. Now, you know, I've, I've seen situations, I've literally seen situations where people are like, oh, I need to get, you know, they find out that they long lost grandmother or somebody's about to give them some money that that's in the states but they don't live in the states anymore right 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 they left like oh i haven't lived in the states forever so they never filed mm. and now they're about to come into this lump sum of money in the united states and the estate is required to give them this money and you find out you're a u.s citizen and now all of a sudden you're like oh i'm delinquent mm. i don't have any filing mm. i should have been filing so it doesn't matter until it doesn't matter until it matters mm. so just stay compliant especially if you're getting exclusion okay like you're not even you know being taxed on the full amount right you're getting this foreign earned income exclusion another gem for our foreigners um or if you're a u.s person and you have a foreign bank account mm -hmm. and that bank account reaches ten thousand dollars at any t any time okay. meaning somebody gave you ten thousand dollars and took it out the next day yeah because it reached ten thousand dollars that one day you're required to report it in the united states oh, call we call it fbar but it's the foreign oh. banking reporting yeah okay People don't know that it is a is a required filing if you do not file say you don't know a lot of people don't know this right yeah there's there's relief for that you can say well i really didn't know it's reasonable cause i i, I genuinely did not, did not know i did not have a cpa to tell me this i was filing my taxes on turbo tax even though i think they asked the question on turbo tax i think they do they do yeah, they um do. But, but, say I don't, you, but see i don't think it is as clear as what you've explained it because those questions like it's a lot of them I don't know, sometimes when you're going through like the online filing of, the, of your taxes, mm -hmm. those questions are just kind of like, oh, well, yes or no, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You're not thinking like, oh, I could get penalized. This, if this I is something this. that's going to like really ding me if I answer incorrectly. And the good thing is for the foreign bank reporting is that if you are not actually earning any income off, off of like, if it's not in an interest bearing account, there's relief that says, I didn't know reasonable cause. Let me let me get compliant. Right. But if you earned income off those accounts and you're a U.S. person, man, you should have actually reported that income mm. on your tax return. So there becomes other issues. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, um, the accounts are not in, like it's like a regular bank account. It's not earning any interest or anything. Yeah. Because if it did, um, most banks in foreign jurisdictions will. Um, require you to fill out a document that asks if you're a U.S. citizen or not, mm -hmm. and they will immediately because they've all signed these different these countries have signed these agreements that says let us know when you got a U.S. citizen on board. Mm. And a lot of countries are like we don't even want to take U.S. citizens because mm. it's too much. Reporting. And so I always ask this as my my last question: okay. uh, What advice would you give to um, a up and coming young librarian uh, that may be interested in starting a business? One. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also maybe interested in the type of work that you do. Oh, yeah. So if you're a young librarian starting a business, first thing I would suggest you do is make a business plan. Figure out what it is that, you know, that you're actually doing. What is it going to cost? Do you need additional funding? You know, what people you need to bring to, to the team? You need, you need a, a CPA, you need a, an attorney, a banker. Remember, get your ABC 
that's what I would suggest. And, and then someone who's interested in doing what I'm doing, uh, becoming a CPA, and then also then moving into uh, the tax field, my path was I went to, I got my undergraduate degree in accounting. Then I interned and decided I wanted to do tax. Okay. So then I got my master's of taxation. You don't necessarily have, well, nowadays you do have to have a master's. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's needed. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, it was very beneficial to my career. You know, a lot of times people go to school and they was like, I didn't use this degree yeah. for, for, what for tax. Do. It was very beneficial. Right. Um, and so, and then I also got my CPA. It, it's not an easy feat. Right. Less than 1% of black people in America have CPAs. Mm. And so I would say, if you are interested in doing this, stay focused. You can do it. We are highly sought after. Um, with the business that you guys have now, would you go ahead and let the, the viewers oh, yeah. out there? We want to support our black owned businesses. You know, if they're Liberian owned as well. So um, could you just kind of give everybody a insight into how they can find you guys, the type of pieces that they can oh, yeah, most order definitely. and everything? Yeah. So you can find us on Instagram, the Brandoff Collection. And my website is also thebrandoffcollection.com as well. Go to the website, fill out the form, and that's how we start the process. It's a combination of our names, Brandy and Randolph. Okay. When we were getting married, you know, I think it was the same year that uh, Kanye and Kim Kardashian got married, they call him Kimmy A. <laughs> and so my friend um, named us Brandoff, and we just kind of like ran, ran with, with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> And so it's the brand off collection. We wanted to make sure that it was prestigious. We build and install barn doors, console tables, coffee tables, anything that you can make up with wood. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, uh, we, I say we, like I'm down there chopping. I mean, you, know. you, you doing your part. Uh, yeah, I do my part. <laughs> and how can the people find you? You can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Brandy Samuel. There you go. Reach out to me, you know, give me a shout out. Again, I'm an international tax person here. Uh, I will be giving tax tips because I want to help the people. You can contact me, Brandy Samuel on LinkedIn. Uh, but no, I just want to thank you uh, and, and appreciate you for coming on. Thank you for um, having me. This is awesome. Yeah, please, you guys, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to write them down below. If you ask the questions, I'll send them to Brandy and um, she'll probably even hop on there and answer any questions that you guys may have as well. So thanks guys. Bye. <laughs>